News broke that Bucks head coach Lovey Smith was fired after just two seasons with the organization where significant progress was made from year one to year two. Herm, what's going on here? Well, this is an organization, when you look at the history of it, and I'm familiar with that and the fact that um, Tony Dungy went down there with myself, with Lovey Smith, Rod Marinelli, uh, Monty Kiffin, uh, to try to resurrect this, this organization. And, uh, Tony never got to fulfill uh, the, the end of the deal. In other words, Tony stayed there for six years, and then Coach Gooden came in. Uh, he lasted seven. And then from there, it's really been a turnover machine. Uh, at seven years, uh, basically had three head coaches. Uh, that's never good. Uh, and you think about what Lovey was trying to do uh, with this football team. Arrows were pointing up. There's no doubt about it. Uh, first year, not so much. They get a rookie quarterback, and they improve offensively as well as defensively. Now, the last four games didn't go well. Uh, you know, they're 6-6 six and six going down the stretch, and obviously you lose uh, four, four in a row. You lose one to Carolina, uh, to the Bears, uh, to the Saints, uh, and then who was the other team? Uh, to the Rams. And so you, you end up, you know, 6-10. and ten. They lose four games by a score or less. So whoever's going to obviously get the job, is inheriting a team that basically you lose four games by a score or less. You can go from six and ten to ten and six right away with a young quarterback, obviously. Uh, and it was just handled, I think, the wrong way when you when you look at how this thing went down. I know Lovey personally, a good friend. I know he'll take it. He's a gentleman. Um, it's not shocking. It's surprising because I know the history of this. And, and uh, it's puzzling, but here again, this is the NFL, and here's the problem, and you guys can go. If they decide to hire Dirk Cutter, a man that's in the organization, and he decides to take this job, he's got a tough job as far as the players go. Because now the players will sit in the locker room and go, let's get this right. Lovey was here for two years. He's trying to build this thing. We're headed in the right direction. They fire Lovey, make Kurt Cutter, the head coach, well, did, was, was, was he involved in this? You know, I mean, all of a sudden, you know, he gets an interview somewhere, and all of a sudden, Lovey's gone. If he becomes the head coach, mm -hmm. this is what players are thinking. Yep. I was a former player. That's a tremendous point. I get this, mm -hmm. okay? Did he kind of have something to do with this because he was going to leave? So you've put him in a bad spot, too, if you decide to hire him. And he's a fabulous coach. I get that. If you want to hire him, hire whoever you want. But you better know that going in. Not like the players won't play for him. But that's some of the sentiment in that locker room if this happens. It's concerning. <clears throat> you are a black man. Oh, that's last time I checked. That's right. Mm -hmm. You're also a head coach in the NFL, mm -hmm. New York Jets, Kansas City Chiefs. Some would say that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did hire Tony Dungy. They did hire Raheem Morris. They did hire Lovey Smith. So what's the problem? My question to you is, as an African-American who was a coach in the NFL, who now has seen that number dwindle to four, particularly when you consider the way this has been handled, what are your emotions? Uh, it's concerning uh, that uh, since Tony became a head coach, and, and I follow Tony on his staff, when you look at the numbers, they're dwindling. And uh, there is a Rooney rule in effect, and that can sometime put you in a, in, a, in a bad position because the more we talk about this Rooney rule, I understand how, they, how it came about. I was involved in it. I get it, okay? I, I was involved with the Bill Walsh deal. I came through the tree. I was the first guy from the Bill Walsh's deal to come through the tree and, and, and become, you know, one of the black head coaches. But the Rooney rule can be a deterrent for you as well because let's say, for instance, Philadelphia. First thing they said when they fired Chip, oh, we interviewed Deuce Staley. Well, they just, what they just did is they said, okay, we, 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 we succumbed to the Rooney Rule. Deuce Staley's not going to be the head coach of Philadelphia. But here's the problem. Deuce Staley all of a sudden has been interviewed. Next year, if Deuce Staley gets his name involved in another one and he gets interviewed, because they will use sometimes coaches that will not be head coaches Got it. because they're black candidates, to say that we, Got it. we were in step with the Rooney Rule. Well, three or four years, if you keep getting interviewed, and guess what? All of a sudden, the owners are saying, well, wait a minute, this guy's been interviewed three years in a row. He's had five different interviews. No one else is hiring. Why should I hire him? So that bothers me. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's bothersome. 
Now, those coaches can't say that because some of these young guys want to get interviewed, and I think you need to go through the interview process. But all of a sudden, if your name keeps coming up and you don't get a job, it's kind of like, wait a minute. They're just using me that, to apply to the Rooney Rule. Last question, Skip. That's right. fine. How do you feel telling us, because you're a member of that coaching fraternity, so I do understand the sensitivity. Jason Garrett still has a job. <laughs> Jeff Fisher, 21 years, six years with a winning record. He still has a job. But Lovey Smith is gone. Well, it goes to show you that and, and I don't know if it's so much yeah, if he's a black coach, white coach. I think ownership has a lot to do with things. And obviously, certain organizations you go to, you're going to have a chance to build your football team. Other ones, not so much. And uh, according to how the cards are dealt, you know, this, this job is basically, when you look at the numbers for most coaches, it's a three-year job mm -hmm. if you don't win. And sometimes even if you win, it doesn't help you. Look, Chuck Pagano, we all sat here during the, before the season started and said, Chuck Pagano, like, you know, if he doesn't win the championship game, he might be out, okay? So we saw that thing unfold. Well, all of a sudden, they said, well, wait a minute. No, he's coming back. Great for Chuck Pagano. But generally, you know, and he was winning. He won. He, Three consecutive 11 and And he was going to be out. So there's so much pressure on head coaches anymore in the fact that you can win, but if you don't win the right games or you don't win enough of the big games, you're out. And if you don't win, obviously, that's another, that's another story. Mm -hmm. We get that part. Two things. Really appreciate your perception that you provided us about the Deuce Staley's of the NFL world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That he becomes, if you will, a token interview to satisfy the requirement of the Rooney Rule, and it could happen four or five times yes. over the next three or four years. And all of a sudden, he's out because people say he's, they're just using him to satisfy the requirement. Okay, exactly. I got that. My friend John Wooten, you know, well, yeah. oversees the Rooney Rule, Fritz Pollard Alliance, yeah. would argue on the behalf of the Rooney Rule that at least it puts Deuce Staley. We're actually talking about Deuce Staley on first yeah. take here. Like, it puts him on the map. So, so there is some positive that can eventually turn into a negative. It can. Correct? It can. Okay, just for the record. As long as, as long as, mm -hmm. look, you, here's, here's my question. <laughs> they fired Chip Kelly. First thing the Eagles come out with, we're going to interview Staley. It, it was Staley. too easy. He's, he's, he's hanging. Like, come on. Yeah. Wait a minute, man. Like a punk. It didn't yeah. even sound right. good. And it's not Deuce's fault. Yeah. Because right. Deuce has no. to do that. He's a young coach. You know, his aspiration to be a head coach. And he has to do it because he's been working for the Eagles all these years. How yes. you going to turn down your yeah. Yeah. for you? Yeah. But if you got to take the interview. You know, Ron yeah. Rivera went through that. Mm -hmm, he he's did. a minority coach, yeah, by the way. Right. Yeah, yeah. He went through that. And he thought, and I know he's a personal friend. Ron said, you know what? Man, it doesn't, I, I ain't, he was interviewed by everybody. I sat with Tony Dungy with Kansas City Chiefs. When people will actually call him on the phone and say, you know, we're going to bring you in. And then all of a sudden leak it to the paper that they interviewed him. And he never went on campus to get interviewed. It was like, are you kidding me? I mean, this stuff goes on. Now, no one says anything about it, but it goes on. You okay? Okay, last quick thing, we, and we got to let you fly. You said you weren't shocked yeah. over what happened to Lovey because you know the quote-unquote history of this. Are you talking about the Glazer family well, history? Yeah, okay, at, give us some history. quick insight into how did they own and operate their football team. Well, they're, they're, first of all, they're not patient and they listen to too many people outside Got the it. Mm. That's a problem. Too many I'm just a, three head coaches in seven years. They're on their fourth head coach. Raheem Morris, three years. Shiano, two years. Lovey Smith, two years. Mm. That's like, okay, you keep doing this. And the players, and this is what I say, they may hire Dirk Cutter. He might be a fabulous head coach. But I'm just telling you what those players in the locker room are thinking. Before I let you go, I'm not asking you anything. Okay. I just want to share with you yeah. what my producers on radio, Jonathan Winthrop and Nuno Texiera, along with David Zinger, contributed. We got 12 offensive, uh, we got 12 coordinators out of 64 in the NFL. And you've got numerous guys that are coordinators to a head coach on the same side of the ball. So if you got Dennis Thurman working under Rex Ryan, yeah, Rex Ryan's gonna take the credit or the blame, but what does that say about Thurman? Not much. No. You look at this guy, Harold Goodwin for the Cardinals, same side of the ball as Bruce Arians. It's not Bruce Arians' fault. No. 
No. I'm not blaming the head coaches. Right. I'm simply pointing out that when they're on the same side of the ball, when we talk about Arizona's offense, we don't talk about Goodwin. We talk about Bruce Arians. Right. You see what I'm saying? And so we look at it from that perspective. And when I look at it in Edgar Bennett in Green Bay, we talk about Mike McCarthy who gave up play calling duties, took it back, all of this other stuff. I'm saying to you, one of the concerns that I have is we have black coordinators who ain't being recognized as coordinators because we're too busy talking about the head coaches they work for who are getting all the credit for what their job entails. And I'll tell you another one. That's a great point. But here's the other point. Let's get some diversity in the hiring process, the people that do the hiring. Another how about the general managers? And by how the way. How about that? But that's true. And by the way, Skip, Coach, Molly, mm-hmm. black people have more money in this day and age than ever before. I'm quite sure there's some qualified blacks that can own an NFL team. You can put a group together. Maybe if we had some diversity with ownership, because remember, it's not just about their ability to hire their chosen candidate, and it could be a white coach. There's nothing wrong with that. But the point is they'd be in that room with those owners, with so many things that influence the game. So maybe the NFL needs to come on board with the NBA. Mm. NBA Michael Jordan being in that room as an owner. Maybe the NFL should do something like that. Just a thought. All good. Phenomenal conversation there, guys, and that was tremendous insight as always. Thanks, but, Coach. Um, thank you. Really making us think. Herm, thank you so much. You got a busy day. So yeah, you gotta I gotta go. go talk some more. Keep it moving. Go do it. <laughs> After the break, Adrian Peterson makes strong comments against Commissioner Roger Goodell. We'll tell you what he had to say when we come back.